So how did you find out about Liverpool's interest then? Well, I was literally at university um, at Warwick um, and got a call. I was playing for Skelmersdale. Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention them, that well-known Lancashire team. <laughs> um, and the Skelmersdale chairman told me that um, Liverpool were on the way down with him, Bill Shankly, um, and where could we meet? And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, OK. Um, so we met at my student house, which was like a converted hotel. There were 45 of us in a like a 25 room old hotel converted for a student home. And that's where we met. Mm -hmm. We literally arrived around supper time and um, yeah, it was totally out of the blue. Were I wasn't phased by it, by the way. Were the other students uh, in the building at the time? Yeah, word got round. Yeah, <laughs> I was told afterwards that they were stirring Shanks's tea with their fingers, you know, but t just to say they'd done that. But um, <laughs> I hope that wasn't. I hope that wasn't true. <laughs> so, what did he say to you? Um, he was very low key. He. he it, this was 1970, um, probably about April 1970, and he was more or less saying that he needed to build a new team. You know, he was talking about people that were just stars to me, mm -hmm. and kind of saying, "Well, he's finished, and he's finished, and he's finished," and he's kind of going. You know, these are household names, these are great players mm -hmm. you're talking to me about. And he was suggesting it would be a good time to come to, to Liverpool Football Club. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very low key, uh, about half an hour I guess, and he offered me a contract for one year at £35 a week, the massive amount. Um, I said I'd think about it, which totally blew his mind I'm told later on. In the car on the way back to Liverpool they were kind of saying, who do you, th who do you think he is, he'll think mm -hmm. about it. Um, but I did, and I called my dad and uh, the family, and we talked about it. And I called them back a couple of days later and said I'd sign for forty pounds a week. <laughs> and they said they'll call me back. <laughs> and about a day later, they called and confirmed that that was okay. One year contract, forty pounds a week. That's such a big career change, though, isn't it? If you're considering you were thinking of an academic route. Uh, yeah. Well, it was so weird that I even forgot to cancel my place at Birmingham University, <laughs> which was due to start in the September. Um, and it wasn't until like October I suddenly thought, wow, I better call Birmingham University, tell them I'm not coming. Mm -hmm. By which time I was in the first team. They probably knew I wasn't coming, but... Um, it must have been such an exciting time though, was it? Were, were you nervous at all? Do you know, I never was, and um, that's kind of weird, because I'm not the most confident uh, person in, in many walks of life, you know. I love my cricket, and the people who know me at cricket will tell you I was terrified in front of six men and a dog going into <laughs> bat. But there was just something about the game of football that I took to and going down the tunnel at Anfield was never a problem um, and it's a good thing too because uh, I just breezed through it mm -hmm. you know it just seemed just seemed very natural to me which surprises me looking back. Not many people um, get the opportunity or are able to score in one cup final and um, you managed to score in in two so how special was was that goal for you? Yes, it was special, um, particularly because it was a very non-Liverpool game, you know, a uh, goal. You know, we have this view of Liverpool as this pass the ball around and create a chance. This was a long kick from, a long punt out from Ray Clements, um, a flick on from John Toshak, and I'd run off the wing diagonally and, and put it in with the next touch. So it was like route one football. <laughs> um, uh, I remember Shanks afterwards being, being interviewed about the goal and he... Uh, they were saying, I think the media were saying, did I side foot it in? And Shank said, no, he clipped it in, <laughs> which is exactly what I did. It was kind of a little reverse, reverse clip, you know, but the, the debate was, how did I score it? But it kind of got lost between Kevin's two goals, you know, so, it's, so it, it wasn't the memorable moment of the game. But w everyone was very much on song mm -hmm. at, the, at the height of their powers. You know, you could run all day when you're, when you're in that kind of mood. And I have this wonderful image of Shanks on the sideline, isn't he, doing, you know, this, yeah. you know, as he's saying, push and shove the ball around in the, in the last 10 minutes of the game or something. He's up on his feet, and that's so, so Shanks, you know. Well, just a, a couple of months later, um, Bill Shankly dropped the, yeah. the bombshell that he was, was leaving the club. Where were you when you heard the news? I don't remember um, where I was. I remember being devastated by it. But I was very, I was, can you be fond of Shanks? I had enormous respect for him um, and the fact that I knew he, he had this soft spot for me just made it, on a personal level, uh, I, I was disappointed because I couldn't see the reasons for it because I was one of those who, who was very much in favor, well, let's keep the thing going now, we've won this, mm -hmm. let's go and win everything now and suddenly your leader has, uh, has announced his retirement. So after that kind of shock then it was a case of saying, well, who's likely to come in? I remember sitting in the dressing room with the rest of the players and saying, well, you know, who's likely to come in? Are they going to get Brian Clough or somebody like that? 
maybe he won't fancy any of us and we'll all have to find new clubs. Because I wasn't just a professional footballer at that time, I was a Liverpool footballer. That's what, the, for me, the definition of being mm -hmm. a professional footballer meant playing for Liverpool. I had no other experience of, of the industry. Yeah. Um, so I didn't want to go anywhere else. I don't know how I'd have handled that. Um, so it was a very uh, unsettling time. First of all, on a personal level, because mm -hmm. you're worried about, well, what's going on with Shanks? Wh what's that all about? And then the worry about who are they going to bring in? Is it possible to, to sort of sum up what sort of impact Bill Shankly had on your life? Well, he had an, 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 enorm an enormous impact um, and still does in many ways because since 1981 I've been coaching. Mm -hmm. you know, I've been coaching for over 30 years and, and the things I say to players, the values I instill in players, the standards I demand, uh, the ethics and morality of the game, I pick them all up from Shanks. You know, I um, and Ronnie and Joe, and but mm -hmm. particularly Shanks. And um, the way I believe the game should be played is pure Shanks. The way I believe you can should conduct yourself as an individual within the game is pure Shanks. So, yeah, I mean, he had an enormous impact on me. Probably less so as a player. I don't remember. I don't think it was about coaching. It was about the way he was and the way he demanded that you live your life in professional football mm -hmm. that made him so unique. And you never lose those, um, those beliefs.